and welcome back. And I realize I have not been doing a lot of leg days with you. So welcome to leg day, baby, because we got to be able to crush some watermelon between our thighs. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I squat most of the time, like the majority of my leg days are squats and more squats and more squats. I squat three times a week, generally two back squats, one front squat. So that is where I get a lot of my leg stimulus and skull crushing thighs from, um, but I do do accessories. So today is all about my accessories, targeting the leg in a multitude of different ways. Remember, like you walk on your legs all day, and I know this sounds really silly, but because you walk on your legs all day to create more stimulus, you, you've got to kind of like, and in order to kind of shock the muscles, you got to do you got to make sure you're not just going through the motions. You're actively pushing the legs so that you crawl out of the gym because, you know, and it's not a good leg day until you're crawling out of the gym in agony and pain. No, I'm joking. Um, but you got to make sure that you really maximize your time, especially when it comes to legs. And you got to make sure that your weight distribution, and this is a big one, is correct. Because, for example, if you're doing squats and you're squatting on your toes, I'm going down with your knees forward. So let me bring the camera down a bit so you can see what I'm saying. If you're one of those people who's like, I don't squat because it hurts my knees, there is a very high probability that when you're squatting, you're squatting this way, okay? And rather than spun back, squatting that way. So you just got to make sure that when you are doing your leg days, that your weight distribution is correct to maximize muscle activation and obviously to minimize issues like leg knee issues. And that's a big thing. And often the knee pain is a result of either tight glutes or tight quads. So if it like the pain or the, the tightness that you're feeling in your knees is like inside the knee, that's generally a sign that it's your glutes are actually tight, not that you've got knee issues. It's like a referral pain. And that, again, that seems weird. But remember, all your muscles, all your ligaments, your entire body is connected. And so one pain might be a referral for something else. If the knee is kind of, if the pain in the knee is more outer or inner or something like that, it's more, more outer, it could be the result of um, tight quads. Um, and you could also be getting referral pain from like your ankles and that sort of thing referring into the knee. And another thing that could be happening is the shoe that you're using, the orthotics, or the padding that's inside may not be giving an adequate support structure for your gait, i.e. you're walking on it all day. And because you're walking with an incorrect weight distribution in your shoe, it could be causing referral pain. And, you know, you may be compensating or moving your hips or something like that in an irregular pattern. And that could be causing pain in the hip and the knee. So if it is something like that, it is good to see a podiatrist, a foot doctor, and he could analyze your gait and make sure that he you have the correct insert in your foot. For example, I have flat feet um, and I have no arch in my foot. Uh, and that's a result of having short Achilles tendons and walking on my toes for 30 years. So I have these motherfucking like big ass orthotics in my shoes to help correct my gait. And that was part of the reason I tore my hamstring was because I was trying to run with an inc with shoe with which didn't have any padding in it for my gait, for my running pattern, because I walk on about 30% of my foot. Um, so when I'm running, I'm running on even less of my foot. And as a result, the, the, the pressure and the running pattern caused me to tear my hamstring. So it, it, there are so many variables when it comes to knee pain and that sort of thing. And don't just say, I can't squat. 
you, it, there could be so many reasons behind why you can't str squat or why you've got knee pain. So just be aware of that. And most importantly, do mobility, stretch. Okay, it's not fun. I know it's boring. No one wants to stretch, but you've got to, especially as you get older, because you need to be able to have healthy joints. You need to be able to bounce and play and, you know, frolic in the rain if you want, really wanted to. But, you know, like if you're not doing mobility, if you're not priming your body, if you're not keeping the joints nice and healthy, you know, you will start to suffer in the long run. So, after that little mini lecture, let's get on to legs. So, I'm going to be starting. It's a purely body weight dumbbell workout today. Yeah. So, we're going to be start by hitting the quads. And the easy, a nice way to hit the quads is with a narrow stance squat. So, I've got my feet on a plate, which you can't see. Um, <laughs> this is the problem with full body workouts. You gotta be so far away from me to see what the fuck I'm doing. Okay, so we got a plate. Hopefully you can see my head um, because you're so far away right now. Um, okay, so I've got my plate. Sorry. No, no. I, I need it further away so I can see. They can see all of me. So my feet need to be quite close together. And the, because your feet are quite close together, it will limit your range of motion. So by putting your feet on heel or on an elevated surface allows you to get more depth, okay? And by putting your feet nice and close together, you're activating more quads. The further away, the more you'll activate your glutes. So the sumo squat, for example, will work your glutes, your hamstrings, narrow stance squat will work your quads more. And that's exactly what we're about to do. We're about to do a combo, which will activate quads and then glutes and hamstrings. So we're maximizing all the pain and all the pump in one superset. Okay, so grab your dumbbell, front, front squat, okay? And you're gonna go slowly down, okay? You're gonna pause at the bottom and you're gonna go slowly up, okay? Push through your feet, keep your feet nice and flat and don't put your weight on your toes, okay? Weight distribution should be evenly throughout your feet to prevent knee issues, okay? So don't go onto your toes as you're doing it. Stay flat-footed, drive through the entire foot. Oh, and the tempo rips suck. You don't wanna stand up completely either, okay? You wanna stay in tension as much as you can because that just adds to the absolute agony and pain of it at all. And you're gonna do five of these tempo reps, okay? So the goal is about five to 10 seconds, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, and up. One. Ah. Oh, you stand up. Two, three, four, ah, five, and then one, two, three, four. Oh my word. Ow. Ouchies, ouchies, ouchies. Now we're going to go straight into a sumo squat. And you're going to repeat the exact same thing again. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five. Pause at the bottom. One, two, three. Drive through your heels with this one. Okay. And make sure that you're not leading with your toes. You're leading with your bum back, okay? To help activate your glutes and your hamstrings. Drive through your heels, okay? Keep your knees out. All the way down, nice and slow and controlled. Pause and up, slowly up. One more. One, two, three, four, five. Pause, one. Three, four, five, okay. Five, no more. One, two, three, four, five. One thing I should notice 
One, two, three, four, uh, five, out. Okay, is you wanna keep your back upright, okay? You don't wanna cave forward and you don't want the weight pulling you forward, okay? Keep your chest up, as I always say. Stick up your bum, nice and prim and proper form. Your chest is out. Your upright in posture, nice and prom, uh, nice and you know, like posh, like you would be. Okay, and make sure that you keep your chest up and you drive bum back. Okay, keeping that chest nice and high. Okay, this will also help to activate the glutes and hamstrings more. Okay, and then you're gonna go straight back and you're gonna rest for like one, two minutes, not too long, okay? Because this is not like high volume, you don't need to rest as long, you're not going as heavy, so you don't have to rest as long. So like one to two minutes between sets, and then you repeat, okay? And you're gonna start again with the narrow stance squats, and you're gonna do five tempo reps, five second negative, five second positive, pause at the bottom for five reps, then five normal with the dumbbell, and then five body weight. Or if you feel like you can do more with the body weight, go until complete failure. Like five was the limit for me, I was like, oh, burny, 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 burny. But you gotta push through the burn. There's obviously a difference between burning pain and absolute fatigue, okay? So just make sure that you're you're pushing through the lactic acid until you literally cannot do it anymore, okay? Four sets, five, 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 so it's 15 reps with the narrow stance squat and 15 reps with the wide stance sumo squats. I'm gonna do my next three sets and then I'm gonna catch you in a bit for some quads and hamstring isolation. Yeet. You booty. Okay, so first superset is done. Narrow stance squats with wide stance squats. You could also do a variation on the leg press where you did narrow stance squats and then you would do wide with toes just over the edge of the plates at the top for your wide. Sorry, so did I say wide and wide? So narrow feet in the center of the plate and then wide with your toes just over at the bottom top of the plate and that's an awesome way so again just five 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 tempo then normal and then drop the weight and do five or as many as you possibly can until failure so that is a really nice way to change it up if you are one of those people who does not like to do squats at all that's a great variation but this is a at home or minimal work, minimal equipment workout that I'm doing um, because obviously I'm at a CrossFit gym. There is no equipment. I'm making do with what I've got. And quite frankly, this is the kind of style I tr do. It's kind of, uh, the kind of training I do anyway. I'm mumbling like crazy today. Okay, so now we're gonna do some extensions and leg curls, hamstrings and quads isolation time. So isolation, again, essentially, like it's called, you're trying to isolate the muscle. And this is really important from both re rehabilitation and muscle I, I focus point. You know, if you're doing bodybuilding, it is important to be able to isolate every single muscle to make sure that you are working that muscle and that muscle with as, as few accessory muscles and secondary muscles taking over. Okay, so if you've got like a lagging body part, if you are struggling with the muscle mind connection, it's really important to do these isolation exercises to make sure you're activating everything correctly. Like for me, I'm very quad dominant. So when I squat, I'm predominantly using my quads. When I'm doing anything, I'm predominantly using my quads. So my quads are far stronger than my hamstrings and it reflects in my isolation exercises. So we're gonna start with some dumbbell lying leg curls, hook it around your feet and you're gonna go up, okay? And you wanna kind of squeeze your knees together to help extend out and up, okay? Bring that dumbbell up, okay? And really focus on bringing that dumbbell up with your hamstrings, okay? Squeeze your knees together, 
slow and controlled, keeping the dumbbell in tension, okay, don't put it down. And because this is using a dumbbell, it's so much harder than lying in their coils with a machine, I find. So there's no manipulation because you're literally just going to start to fail. And when you start to fail, you're just going to pump out as many partials as you possibly can because partial extensions is where that stretch happens and that's what we want oh, straight to complete failure right all oh, my hamstrings are on fire right now now we're going to turn around and this is hard okay i'm not going to lie so you're going to stand and down extend pause and down stand Pause and down. Obviously, the more upright you lean, the harder it gets. The more you lean back, the more counterweight you can use. So find what works for you. Again, we're staying in tension the entire time. We're not putting the weight down. We're going until we can't literally go anymore. And it's not going to be many reps more because failure is imminent and partials until you can't go any <clears throat> keep on trying to straighten out your legs as you can <clears throat> ow like that is one way to really isolate the quads and the hamstrings like seriously fuck the machines try that with a dumbbell and don't go heavy with a dumbbell like literally that's five kilograms it's so destroying. It's so humbling and how hard it is. And literally, you just want to go max reps, okay? As many full reps as you can until you can't go anymore, then partial to complete failure. Okay, push through that lactic acid and just keep on going until you can't go anymore. Okay, it's very, very humbling how hard it is compared to a machine um, and so much, so much harder. But that's how we make gains, baby. One rep at a time. Yeah.